Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that would never go on vacation when bots need help during a rust storm. <laughs> I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how's it going? Creator, producer, and star of Empire of Rust, editor Mike. Listen, there's a storm coming, and I got a lot of vacation time saved up, so bye. <laughs> <laughs> And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey, you guys. Let's talk Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, always with the enthusiasm. <laughs> Thank you for, for that uh, energetic <laughs> as, as Daryl just chokes and, and dies. <laughs> Excuse me. We're Maybe doing it live, Daryl. <laughs> nice knowing you. <laughs> As always, we start off the show by thanking our Donatrons, those lovely people who give us money on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to become a Donatron, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. And this week, we welcome back one of our Donatrons, Will, who has come back into hey. the fold. Welcome back, Will. Thank you so much for supporting us. Woo. Go, Will. <laughs> right on, <laughs> Will. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> and one of the one of the big perks of being a Donatron is that you are automatically entered into our Toy Hacks $10 gift code drawing. And we're going to do the drawing for February next week. So you've still got a little bit of time to I sign you were up. I say now. And I'm like, we did not talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I put it in the doc. The notes are right there in the doc. You can see. Read the doc, Jeremy. <laughs> I have been busy working on <laughs> the, the multimedia presentation. <laughs> Some more excuses. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the Toy Hacks drawing will be next week, not this week. So you have some time. Uh, if you get your entries in by February 28th, you will be in the drawing. You can either become a Donatrion, so that's the easy way to be automatically entered, or you can send an email to contest at transmissionspodcast.com with a picture of the Transformer toy you'd like to get stickers for. So two easy ways to enter. I suggest the Donatrion way, but, you know, that's just me. All right. Uh, before we get into the main event, uh, I did want to mention that the uncut version of Empire of Rust Episode 43, Fix-It Fabrication Junior 2, Fixing It Faster, that's exclusive to our Donatrions, another perk uh, that's on our Patreon. And that came out Monday, February 22nd. So uh, if you are interested in getting the long extended cut of the latest episode of Empire of Rust. You can check it out on our Donatron page. Or Patreon, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so without further ado, we are here for this special uh, all-video transmissions podcast because we're talking about the best of 2020 survey results. So we got over 330 responses this year. It was a pretty good uh, turnout. Thank you to everyone who filled out the survey. And you guys helped us choose. Well, you guys are choosing the best yeah. toys and comics. For, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best Transformers toys and comics for 2020. In transmissions on this show, we'll be talking about the toy results. And then in alt mode, we will do the comics results. We also had some results for Empire of Rust. So I think Mike, we have Mike here to talk about that in alt mode as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but on this show, it, of course, it's all about toys. And toys needs a toy guy, and that's Daryl. So, uh, Daryl, I'm going to hand it over to you. <laughs> yes, you, Daryl. Not, there's not another Daryl on the show. It's just you. <laughs> there's, there's no other Daryl behind you. You don't have another brother named Daryl. <laughs> this, this is not the new art show. Thought it was <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> Daryl, take us through the best Transformers toys of 2020. All right. So, 
Um, we, uh, this is like the eighth year we did this and, and I always love doing this uh, survey. I don't love building the survey. Uh, I just love reading the results. It's yeah. really, really quite fun. <laughs> I think the, the people that actually go and pull out every question, they are the true heroes. They are. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a, it's a long survey. It takes a lot of work to put together. So if you've, if you went through and you answered this survey, I, I really give you a lot of props. It's, it, there's a lot of questions in this thing and, and it really does. It produces a lot of really cool results here. So let's get it started. And uh, I, I think we're going to jump right to uh, the best uh, War for Cy Cybertron Earthrise. What? What, one, what one do you have first? Oh, do you collect Transformers <laughs> toys? I didn't think you were going to use that one. Okay, sure. You always use that one. <laughs> do you collect Transformers toys? Uh, yes, that was a big resounding yes. 45.9%, both Hasbro and third party. So that's a really cool number. Um, there's 31.4%, uh, uh, only Hasbro so far, but I'm open to third party products as well. So um, yeah, so there's that's a really good one. Every single person... Um, answered that question so thank you for that uh on to the first toy category and this is best war for cybertron earthrise battle master figure and we've got the winner for that is rung this one really kind of surprised me a lot uh because this is this is not originally a, a earthrise figure this was from siege uh, and uh, this was just kind of repacked into Earthrise, so it was—it's a really popular character, right on. Um, so 35.7% uh, chose Rung, uh, second place with 33.9%. So that's a pretty close second, Slitherfang. So if uh, if you got Rung and you're like, eh, he's good, but he's he's a he's a from Siege, Slitherfang is uh, is your is your original Earthrise figure that one. Um, but yeah, moving on, we've got uh, best War for Cybertron Earthrise Micro Master figure, and this one wasn't even close. Fifty-five percent chose Fuser and Autobot Blastmaster, the Astro Squad, and uh, this one is a really good uh, package. I bought it myself. The only Micro Master set I bought for myself because it looks great. Didn't and uh, Charles showed it off a week or two ago. He did. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Yep. So it's a great little set, and uh, obviously a lot of people liked it because it uh, it won handily. So taking a look at that one there, uh, second place, which really is not even close, was Direct Hit and Power Punch, the Battle Squad, and this was a uh, re-release from Siege. Moving on, we've got the best War for Cybertron Earthrise Deluxe figure. These are the this this had a lot of figures in this category, and. Uh, Winning it with 128 votes, 40.3%. Cliffjumper. And this is a really cool figure. Um, one that uh, I have myself and was uh, retooled a bunch of times for a bunch of exclusives. But uh, if you've got the original one here, you definitely uh, know what I'm talking about. Uh, second place for this category was 36.2% uh, Smokescreen. Earthrise Smokescreen. And coming in a close third place with 32.4%, Wheeljack. Uh, next, we've got the, we're going to go stick with the Deluxe, but we're going to go with the Netflix Deluxes. And winning this category handily, like running away with it, wa with 74.5%, Netflix Bumblebee. This was one of the retools of Cliffjumper. And obviously people really like this mold. So it is a wonderful figure. I still don't have it myself, but it's it's one of those figures that obviously people really, really liked. Uh, second place was 39.7%. Uh, Alita 1. So there you go. Uh, on to the Earthrise Voyager figures. And uh, there weren't a lot. There was only five figures to choose from from this line that were out this year. But uh, winning it... With 60.8% Starscream. And I am not surprised by this one at all. That uh, Seeker mold is just wonderful. And, and Starscream uh, has his own little fan club. So. Oh, yeah. Um, second place with 38.2%. 
is uh, Snapdragon with, uh, uh, what was his name? I can't read his name here. I don't know, Snapdragon, the Headmaster Snapdragon. And then in third third place with 35.4%, Grapple. Uh, moving on to the Netflix Voyager. And this one, again, was not even a contest. Uh, I don't even know why we put the other three characters listed here. But running away with it was 73.2% of the vote, Soundwave. Netflix Soundwave with Laser Beacon Ravage. Uh, this one... If you've been looking for one and it's it's hard to find, we talked about it because I just recently got help with one from my brother last week to get one. Um, it's hard to find. It's it's getting a little bit easier because more of the WalMarts are getting it right now. But man, oh man, it's a wonderful figure and uh, definitely worthy of winning uh, best uh, best Netflix Voyager for 2020. Uh, on to the category that. Uh, um, usually encompasses all the rest of them. Uh, this is best War for Cybertron Earthrise leader, commander, or Titan figure from uh, 2020. This, I don't think that is... Oh, I have Cyberverse next. Uh, you missed one. <laughs> I think I have... Cyberverse is right after this one. Hmm. You are right. I missed one. <laughs> so we, we will. You, you don't have a slide for this? I, I made the images. I apparently didn't put it in PowerPoint. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so, we, we will um, just do it and we'll yeah. hand it out later. We'll do it live. <laughs> I mean, I got the, we got the images. We'll tweet them out. All right. So this one here was interesting. This, like I said, it encompasses a whole bunch of different figures. Um, but, uh, Winning this category just by a hair, 52.7% of the vote went to uh, leader class Optimus Prime. So that's a good figure. Uh, we, we had a really good discussion on the show about uh, whether or not it, uh, it gets leader class status just because of the trailer. And pretty much we're all in agreement it does. But uh, it, again, is, uh, is the winner of this uh, category. Second place with 51.1%, Skylinks. And I found this very interesting because generally, in the past years, this category, even though it, it's, it is all-encompassing of Leader, Commander, and Titan class, is generally always won by the Titan class figure. Um, and even though Scorponok did come in third place, it, uh, it really wasn't close to uh, Optimus Prime uh, for leader class. Um, so before we jump into Cyberverse, I want to toss it back around the, the table here and see if uh, anybody's kind of surprised by any of these, uh, these results for Generations. Mike? Slitherfang had its win totally stolen. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i was surprised by uh by the uh the loss on slither fang there uh i mean i i have the wrong figure i really like it but we had a a, a snake a, a, a snake board transformer and that didn't win it's like no 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 it, it <laughs> totally got stolen there so my votes for slither fang uh, All right. Yeah, the other you, ones are. You, you might even make the argument that you could take out Rung since it was a it was a originally a figure from last year, and that you shouldn't put re releases in for the following year. We've always done it. We've always included whether they've been released or not. That's yeah. an argument you could make. <laughs> <laughs> None of my like first choices in this entire toy uh, toy category. None of them won. <laughs> Slither Fang? Nope. Grapple? Nope. Uh, what was it Deluxe I chose? Um, 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 runabout? Nope. <laughs> hmm. So, surprise? Yeah, kind of. Sure. <laughs> Interesting. Charles, It's. Been, I think we've got established that Mike has poor taste in Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> What uh, uh, Charles? What did? What was your reaction to those uh, those results as they came in? Uh they're pretty. Uh, I'm 
not not too shocked. I mean, uh, I think a lot of people still like Rung from More Than Meets the Eye, so people are still uh, you know excited about that figure. Uh, and maybe that's enough to to put it over the top for Sly Slither Fang, unfortunately. Um, the Micro Master, of course, I, I I picked up the the uh, um, Fuser and Blade and Blast Master, so I'm not surprised there. I like those. I also like the second place, the Direct Hit and Power Punch. I like the Micro Master Combiners, so I, I think people people enjoyed those. Um, I was a little uh, surprised that the both. Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee are were taking away the deluxe category. Um, I mean, I, I actually haven't I haven't had a chance to play with either mold, so I guess uh, they they must be really nice. I did want to get a Bumblebee, but couldn't find it anywhere. Um, no, not surprised by Soundwave winning the Netflix Voyager um, uh, or Starscream winning the uh, the regular Voyager category. So there's those are Starscream. You can't go wrong with Starscream and Soundwave, and those are. Those are two really good molds. I, I really would like to get that start, that Soundwave mold. I haven't been able to find it. Um, I am a little bit surprised that Optimus Prime was able to take home the leader category. Yeah, like you said, usually the um, the Titan class figure takes it away, but they Scorponok came in third. That was that was a bit surprising to me. But uh, but I think Skylinks and, and Optimus Prime are really good figures too. And yeah, I have. I have. Optimus Prime is just such a good. Yeah, yeah, I do. St I do still think that trailer is really kind of ass, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the 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 Earthrise Prime is a is a really good figure. So, Skyling should have won. Jeremy, what are your thoughts? You you do you know you you've been campaigning hard for that Earthrise Optimus <laughs> all, all year. It's like you know, um, but I mean you do have Skylinks. I know, um, and, and uh, in play value, Skylinks really has it over the Optimus. Um, I mean, my my kid just sits there, and you know, it's one of the modern toys that I let him as a six year old play with because I'm not afraid he's going to break it. And that's ballsy. Um, <laughs> wow. he, he kind of just takes it and then i see him playing with it and i'm like well you know it, it's got big ratchety joints so it should be fine but I, I was surprised that both cliff jumper and bumblebee won being that they're you know it's the same figure the same yeah <laughs> and and that bumblebee won by the margin it's mm -hmm. you know people love bumblebee <laughs> but when, when i was putting together the images and my son, he saw the cliff jumper. I told him, you know, who that was. And then he saw Bumblebee. And he's like, why does Bumblebee have the same gun? So then I got to explain, <laughs> you know, how toys are, are remolded. Go to the episode. <laughs> well, no, but Bumblebee had the same gun as cliff jumper. Right, yeah. In the image. So I'm like, you know, this is how toys are made. They're, you know, you get a single mold and you make little changes. Um, but the Netflix uh, sound wave also, I wasn't really surprised. It, it's on my list of, of ones I need to get because I've been holding off on any of the War for Cybertron sound waves because oh I thanks still have Cheryl. it sitting sitting next yep. to me. Uh, we got that for me. We, <laughs> <laughs> we we know your brother hooked you up. You told us yeah. that already. <laughs> Just way to rub it in our faces. That's what I do. Yeah. So uh, yeah I wasn't surprised that it won because it's you know basically the perfect modern Sound wave, so right on. All right. Well, let's jump in and, and head over to the world of Cyberverse. And we got a lot of responses on Cyberverse as well. A little less than usual just because uh, you know, people haven't really been into the Cyberverse figures, but that's okay. We still got a ton of responses, which made for a really fun uh survey result here. So, first off, best cyberverse scout figure. And this one was a lot closer than uh, than I would have expected, but winning this one was a complete surprise to me with 29.3% Ramjet. Who knew? I, I have no experience with any of these figures, so I, I didn't vote. I didn't vote on any of these categories anyway. That's that's something that I, I do abstain from. But uh, this is a, a really cool a really cool win for uh, Ramjet here, Cyberverse Scout Ramjet. And... Uh, Second place with 26.6% was Wheeljack, and following in at third, 20.2% uh, 
dead end. So a lot of fun f- characters from that Cyberverse show getting some uh, some much needed love here. On to the Warrior class figures from Cyberverse and winning this category by a vote. One vote was S- Cybertronian mode Starscream. Unreal. One freaking vote your won this vote category counts. for him. Your vote yeah. matters. There you so, go. You know, if DJ Ronan didn't vote, then it would have been a tie. <laughs> I think he yeah. voted five times. <laughs> <laughs> His vote really mattered. Mm-hmm. So this was really close. Uh, the So 42.8% is what took it for Cybertronian mode Starscream. With 42.3%, it, it beat out Hammerbite. And Hammerbite is a very cool character uh, from Cyberverse and was very close. On to the Cyberverse Deluxe figures. And again, this one was very, very close. The winner won by two votes. So <clears throat> the best Deluxe figure from 2020 was Decepticon Shockwave with 33.6%. And that's a really cool figure. This is the set of figures that... Uh, was the build a figure wave. So if uh, if you were kind of curious, deluxe figures were there was only eight of them. Each one of them came with a part of McAdams, uh, and and you took it apart and or you got a piece and then you assembled it at the end if you got all eight eight figures. So there you go. Uh, second place in this with thirty two point seven percent of the vote, RC. Very popular character from Cyberverse. That third season uh, for RC was was her season. Um, on to best Cyberverse Ultra figure. Uh, this one was a tougher category. Not a lot of people have experience with the Ultra figures, but uh, they definitely gained in popularity this uh, this year because a couple really popular characters got some really cool figures in this Ultra line. And winning it with 41.9% of the vote, Rack and Ruin. And it's really cool to see Rack and Ruin get some love, especially in uh, um, in, a, in, a, in a line that could be a couple tweaks. You could pull it off and pull, make it into a, a like a Wreckers figure, but uh, yeah, really fun, uh, really fun figure for Rack and Ruin. Uh, second place with thirty one point five Grimlock. So there you go. And last figure for the Cyberverse line was the best ultimate figure. There were only three to pick from. Uh, so with 49.7% of the vote, uh, almost half, uh, the winner of this figure or category was Iaconis. And as I said, I don't have any of these figures, but these are uh, really cool. I've seen them in the stores, and Iaconis is a massive-looking beast of a figure. Uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you. I know that the uh, the other two guys don't have any experience with the uh, the Cyberverse guys through the the 2020 while we talked about it doing the show. But uh, did you pick up any Cyberverse figures? Do you have any experience with any of these ones that we just mentioned? Only one set, and it was the the three pack of Sharktacons with the the black hot rod repaint. Okay. And to be fair, I only picked it up for the Sharktacons. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, is that's the only real. Uh, the only real experience I had with it. I ended up giving the uh, the the hot rod away to a friend of mine, and he dubbed him Pizza Cutter Bot. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. The shark right that comes are really fun. I've He's heard that all the time. A, so. Got a couple friends of the show who uh, who are big fans of Shark Decons, and uh, and they definitely uh, make use of those little guys. Dog mm-hmm. games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to move right on into Studio Series. And Studio Series definitely uh, had um, a couple figures being worked on this year. Uh, And this was the year of Devastator for Studio Series. Um, You might have thought, you know, maybe we should have had a a section for uh, Studio Series number 69 uh, was the gift set for... Uh, Devastator. Well, we didn't put that in because each individual figure was already in a category already. And there would only have been one figure in a pseudo series gift set. So we didn't put that in. So, um, 
But we're going to lead off with Best Studio Series Deluxe Figure. And this one with 49% of the vote, almost half, Shatter. Studio Series number 59, Shatter, the Harrier uh, run from Bumblebee movie. Uh, so this was a really cool figure. I don't have it, but I've heard really great things about it. And uh, yeah, I, uh, it, uh, it, it took the vote. Um, this one was uh, followed up by second place winner, uh, number 57, Off-Road Bumblebee. So the, the Jeep, Jeep Bumblebee. Uh, next, we've got Best Studio Series Voyager uh, figure. And this one really wasn't even a contest. Um, there were, well, we got 266 responses in this, in this category and 212 of them voted for this figure. So um, winning this with 79.7% .7 of the vote, Studio Series 65 Blitzwing from Bumblebee Movie. Starscream. <laughs> no. Star Starscream's getting his again. own figure. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. it's uh, it's It was not even a contest. Um, following it up, uh, you had uh, second place was Sentinel Prime from Dark of the Moon, Studio Series 61. And the last category for this, uh, for Studio Series, we have... Um, Best Studio Series Leader Class figure, and taking it with 69.2% of the vote was Studio Series 56 Shockwave with Brains and Wheelie and a Paratrooper. Um, the only other two characters on this uh, on uh, running against Shockwave were parts of Devastator. So I guess people there were a lot of people who weren't getting Devastator, so uh, voted for the other figure. So that's kind of fun. Did anybody see anything in here? Uh, Jeremy, did you see anything in the studio series stuff that, uh, you know, kind of surprised you? Would you have thought maybe something should have won that didn't, or, or were you happy with the way things kind of turned out? I mean, I was, um, I was a little surprised that Shatter won. That uh, I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't have personally any experience with any of these figures, but just as a character, I just didn't find Shatter that, uh, enticing so i was just surprised plus it was a triple changer that didn't tip, triple change <laughs> yeah not really surprised that shockwave won you know the big bad of, of one of the movies so. what about you charles uh studio series i know that you're a big fan of uh of uh, revenge of the fallen devastator uh none of them got uh, <laughs> none of them got votes um what are your thoughts on the uh, the the way that the studio series kind of uh, came through? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have a, any huge thoughts. I'm not really a big collector of the studio series movie figures, except for the '86 line, if I could ever find it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I do think the at least it seems like the Shatter uh, and Dropkick figures are well regarded, but. Yeah, I mean, we've complained about them not being not being triple changers for a while. So, uh, but um, if people seem to like them, that's good. Um, I guess uh, I was looking through. I guess is the um, the Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime was he a release from twenty nineteen? I get because I, I I was wondering if people were looking for him. I believe he was. Like, okay. Yeah. So that's why yeah, he didn't, Optimus thirty eight. Yeah. 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 So that would have been my pick probably if if I was looking for a studio series figure. So. Well, you're a year late. Um, <laughs> Not surprising. <laughs> all right. So we've got a couple more categories here that we're just going to kind of power through. These were kind of pretty easy ones, the next two anyway. Um, so the best G1 reissue figure for 2020. I fully expected there to be more of these. Uh, put out this year, but uh, kind of the pandemic, I assume, got in the way of some of these coming out. Um, but we only got two. We got Astro Train and Blaster, and they the votes were almost split right down the middle. But edging it out with fifty three point eight percent, Blaster. And I mean, it's a G one figure. I think I've got four of these things. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool figure. I've got two of those particular reissues. I've got and I've got two original G1s. So 
It's a, it's a, it's a figure that's not hard to find if you're a fan of Blaster. Uh, I mean, Astro Train's easier to find, but yeah. So they're really fun figures, um, and uh, I was hoping for for more. And I really hope that they continue the G1 reissues uh, of actual this, G1 figures in 2021. Yeah, did this Blaster reissue come with the tapes? No. Okay. There were no tapes reissued, which was kind of where I thought the rest of the G1 reissues were going to go in 2020. But yeah. uh, alas, we got none. Um, the next one we got was kind of a last minute addition to the, the survey, but I thought, you know what, what the hell? Um, so we've got a selection, uh, our question about what was the best robot enhanced design, AKA the red figure from 2020. And we only got three and the choices were Megatron, Optimus Prime or Soundwave. And all of them were the G1 uh, components or their, their counterparts. Um, and surprisingly enough, I I mean, I shouldn't be surprised how popular this character is, but I kind of was taking the vote with 53.2% Soundwave. And it's a, it's a cool configure. I've seen it in the stores a few times, but man, oh man, I expected Optimus or Megatron to kind of take this one. So that's kind of cool that uh, that Soundwave kind of pulled it out. Um, and then the, the last one here uh, in the mainline uh, questionnaire was the best Hasbro Takara masterpiece figure. And this is always kind of a fun one because we always get a bunch and they're all over the place as far as, you know, what series they're from or if they're repaints or whatever. So winning this category with 40.2% of the vote was MP50 Tigatron from Beast Wars. So that's pretty cool. So a lot of people obviously really liked that. Uh, second place in this category was 34.9% uh, MPM-10 Starscream, Masterpiece Movie Starscream. And third place, MP48 Leo Convoy. Or Leo Convoy, yeah, Leo Convoy. Um, Mike, out of the last three categories there, uh, any any surprises to you? Anything that you uh, you you... Did you vote on everything uh, opposite to what uh, won? <laughs> <laughs> only only on the mainline <laughs> stuff <laughs> uh yeah i'm actually kind of glad that uh tigatron won because that is a, a really beautiful figure um like i've said in the show before it, it's out of my price range at this point but just even just seeing the images for tigatron it is a, a beautiful looking figure and if i could grab any of them i think i'd grab that one so glad on that so you know keep it up uh, takara uh I'm not really a target market anymore, but there are plenty of people out there that still are. So keep making good stuff and keep the masterpiece line going. The bread stuff, I, I've seen like one or two of them in the stores on occasion, but I haven't picked anything up myself. Uh, kind of like, uh, I think I'm in the same boat as Charles on this one. I don't particularly enjoy buying transforming figures that don't transform. So, mm especially for the same price as a deluxe. It's like, uh, give me something a bit more than that. But, you know, I think they look decent, sure. So, uh, you know, take it to the, take it with like what the Super 7 line had done, you know, just go for some like rando characters. I think I'd appreciate that more. But yeah, no, uh, no big surprises on, uh, on these ones. Cool. And uh, Charles, um, I mean, you you've got a blaster shirt on. I assume you 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 wanted this, a blaster. No, this, this this is unaffiliated boombox man. This is not oh, boom, the, right. a blaster shirt. <laughs> right. That's true. True. Uh, I assume it's that like uh, the you... Russian Yoshi equivalent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I'm I'm fairly certain you you are happy with the result of the G1 reissue vote. Uh yeah. I mean I I. I love I Blaster was a toy I had as a kid. Uh he was one of my favorite characters from the Marvel comics. Although I do think the Astro Train toy is a better toy. Uh, Blaster is kind of a brick. I mean, he doesn't really do much. Uh also the price it's pretty pricey for a Walmart exclusive to not have the tapes included too. I mean, that's you've you, they've been previous releases i mean the releases were several years ago but they were cheaper and came with the tapes so it's mm. a little bit you know yeah, that's the mm. one i got mm -hmm. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, I would have actually probably picked Astro Train <laughs> just because I, I think it's a better <laughs> toy. Um, but yeah, the will of the people. <laughs> <laughs> for the for the red figures, I've I, I just saw the the red figures for the first time in the store today, and uh, yeah, they they look cool. But yeah, like like Mike said, I'm not buying these. These are pricey figures to not transform. But I mean, they are good action figures. So if the, you like that, you can get it. All right, and uh, I guess oh. Uh, you got slides, Jeremy, for the next uh, few stuff? Yeah. Okay. So the next one here was just a quick little um, one about flame toys. And uh, this one was kind of a, uh, a last minute add on as well. Um, this was about the flame toys model kits. And uh, we did get some questions and I addressed it in the last show or maybe one of the shows prior to uh, why we did a good question about why the, uh, the, the Kurokawa Kuri stuff wasn't in the, in the survey. Um, and it's because nothing of theirs came out in 2020. No Kurokawa Kuri stuff came out in 2020, but a bunch of model kits did. Um, so uh, we, we put the, the question here. So the winner of the best flame toys model kit for 2020 uh, with 26.2% of the vote was Drift, IDW Drift. And as one of those kits, I don't have. I have a few of these kits, but uh, not, not this one. And I've heard good things about this one. And they just did a red reissue. With Shattered Glass. They did. Yes, a, a, a Deadpool, a Deadpool reissue. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so second place on this. This one was pretty close. Um this was 24.5%. Megatron, the IDW Decepticon version, came in second. Um, the, uh, the Autobot version of this was a previous year. So, uh, Moving on to the last, the very last category in uh, the mainline uh, survey here. And this was the best mainline exclusive figure of 2020. Now, I got to tell you, this was a very difficult category <laughs> to source. The amount of freaking exclusives that came out in 2020 was absurd. We, we Everybody to, had one. We might need to fig re, like, figure out how to handle this in the future years. It's insane. Absolutely insane. Every store and their brother had a freaking exclusive. So, um, yeah, it's absolutely crazy. So um, I'm pretty happy with the results, but uh, God damn, it was hard to figure out who was what. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, we got a lot of responses on this one and winning this category with 41.1% of the vote from Hasbro Pulse and EB Games, Gigawatt. And I think we can all agree this is a pretty cool fucking... Yeah, exclusive to have. So well, I'm I, I'm pretty happy with the way it uh, it, it the kind of the, the way this vote came out. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, second place was the Autobot Alliance Ironhide and Prowl from Amazon, and uh, was it be uh, third place would be the Seeker Elite Skywarp and Thundercracker from Target and Toys R Us. Which, like, with the the graph here, you can't even tell. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's tough. they're they're all just stuffed in there. There, it's tough to see. Yeah. So, um, but it's uh, it's it's there were so many of them. If if you remember taking the survey, this was a category that's probably just seemingly went on forever, and yeah. But hey, we had pictures of them all, and. That's one of the benefits of doing this this survey with us. Um, Good job, Daryl. Hey, I'm going to take that, even though you're probably being sarcastic. I'm going to take that as a, as an honest, <laughs> honest to God, you know. Well, you did a lot of work to it. I'm not going to. Fucking right, I did. I'm not going to deny that. <laughs> Again, I'll um, remind you if you if you start at the beginning of the year, it won't be nearly as tough. It's already too late, Jeremy. <laughs> already too late. We we got to, we got Gigawatt. We just need to. You know, time travel back to the beginning of the year and start collecting the all the, <laughs> only all the toys. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, so I now there was a question that came in, and uh, somebody asked, uh, you know, where was um, the Super Megatron from Selects on here? It was missed. I admit that it was missed. I I, tr I totally missed it. And hey, I would it have beaten Gigawatt? I mean, we'll never know, but probably <laughs> no. not. <laughs> <laughs> um, Does it have a Mister Fusion Cannon? I don't think so. <laughs> it, it's. I mean, there are some that I miss, and I appreciate everyone letting me know. You know, you can send me a tweet if you're doing this survey. You can send me a tweet. You can send. You can. I mean, I read the comments that get put in the survey as they're not as they're being done, but I mean, once a week, I'll probably log in and just check, check a look at the comments just to see if I've fucked something up. And I saw it and I, you know, it was way too late by the time that that comment came in that yeah. I could actually well, and, fix And it, what's so. crazy is you had like two or three people look over. I did. Thing. It was missed yeah. by everybody. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I handed it off a couple, couple experts. <laughs> uh, they're actually quite well-respected you know, people in the fandom to actually look over everything I had. And I got the, okay. I said, oh, you got everything. Okay, cool. Name names, throw them under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it was, and, and it got missed. So yeah, I'll take responsibility. But at the end of the day, I'm just happy. I got as many as I did on there. So some one out of the hundred in that category. <laughs> oh, so many. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Charles, do you want to take it for the, uh, the next couple of, before we get into third party stuff. Uh okay. I can I don't do have that. slides for Yeah, like, it's just reading. I have next yeah. I have third party next. You know I can read, read I, right? I learned I learned how to read uh last year, so I can I can do this. Do you know right. how to read? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh these the next couple of categories were more free form. Uh so these were kind of speculating from the fans what they wanted to see. Uh, so this is a question we ask every year. Which character would you like to see get the masterpiece treatment? And uh, this, the a few characters kind of pop up uh, pretty often every year we do this survey. One of them is Galvatron. Uh, that got 19 votes. And one of them was Jazz with 40 votes. Uh, Jazz is, I mean, it's it's hard to collect this these because people do have lots of varied and different answers. But out of uh, 289 votes for this category, Jazz getting 40 of those is a pretty significant number. And and people are asking for Jazz. I mean, Masterpiece Jazz has been a persistent uh, cry out for the in the fandom for for a long time I now. Think so if you went to the last couple of these that we've done, Jazz is probably at the top of the list. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> It has, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming they mean G1 jazz because ma movie jazz, masterpiece movie jazz has been done. So I'm yeah, assuming it's cares. G1 jazz. <laughs> it's, no yeah, it's 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 Nobody G1 cares. jazz. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next uh, question was: Which figure are you most looking forward to from War for Cybertron Kingdom? So this was interesting, and uh, I think this a lot of people went to that that big art mural that was produced that showed all the kingdom figures and, you know, teased a lot of kingdom figures coming. We haven't actually seen all the kingdom waves so far. We've only seen the first couple, uh, uh, but there are ones that people know are coming. So uh, again, Galvatron got, uh, got 10 votes. So this is out of, uh, out of th about over 300, 304 votes uh, people put in. So Galvatron got 10. Uh, which doesn't sound like a lot, but again, this is every pe people were picking freeform. lot, yeah, free form, lots of lots of different choices. Uh, next one, uh, the uh, the next runner up was the Ark, so that Teletran. big Ark, <laughs> Teletran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no one wrote Teletran in the category. Everyone wrote the Ark or the Transforming Ark, or you know, that's <laughs> that was that was what people typed in. So. Jeremy, you, you might need to to educate people that they need they need to call it Teletran, uh, but trying. that got <laughs> that got seventeen votes, and then the winner uh, of this category uh, with nineteen votes uh, got and you know again uh, the, given the uh, 
uh, the AMA we did last or a couple weeks ago, or no, last week. It was last week. Uh, Beast Wars Megatron. Beast Wars Megatron. Uh, people are looking forward to that figure. So, uh, <laughs> nice. So, David K., uh, if, if we ever get back to conventions again and David K. gets invited, he might have a lot of Beast, uh, you know, a lot of new Beast Wars Megatron figures to sign. So, all right. Uh, next uh, category. Now, this was an interesting one because this is which figure do you think was the worst of 2020? Okay. Now, we got 240 uh, votes in this one. And this category actually was not uh, very spread out. So we actually got 111 votes for one character. <laughs> wow. Uh, and this was Earthrise RC. People did not like Earthrise RC. She's kind of a shell former. She's not really, you know, doesn't really have a really nice complex transformation. It's pretty much just, uh, you know, a robot body folded up inside of a, you know, kind of a, a float, like a like a parade float car. <laughs> and I guess people didn't didn't like that design. So that's <laughs> apologies. Insane. Yeah, that's like om almost half the people who voted in this category, not even voted, who free form typed their answer in this category, picked yep. the same character. It's ridiculous. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's a sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people were like, it was like RC, Earthrise RC, Mainline RC. <laughs> you know, they were all like, no, this RC wow. is trash. <laughs> And we're getting it again in Kingdom. <laughs> oh, are we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it <can> um, repeat. <laughs> it can. <laughs> oh man. I mean, and, and our, we like RC. RC is a great yeah. character. She deserves a good figure. Um, Just wasn't yeah. a great toy. Yeah. Sad. All right, uh, next category. Is there a character you're still waiting for a mainline release of? And this had 262 responses. And uh, surprising, I mean, Tarn. DJD leader Tarn got 22 votes. Uh, so, yeah, people want a Tarn figure. He's pretty cool. It, yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a cool character. I, mean, I think Hasbro's in the... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, the, the only one official Tarn we have is the um, Flame Toys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Hasbro's is kind of a tough spot. It is kind of a sadistic character from the comics, but people really like him, so I don't know. Got to think about it, Hasbro. Tarn. All right. Uh, now, next week... Uh, Asked more of a just a question about your collection. How many Transformers figures do you own? So we got 308 responses on this. So you know everyone threw out different numbers, so it's kind of hard to to judge this. But if if we look at the average, so the mean of of what all the numbers were that people put in, it was about 169.8. So about people say the average is about 170 figures. And then the median response, so this is like right in the middle of uh, between the range of responses, was 60. So that's the kind of the middle ground. And then the mode, which is how many people put this response in, was 50. So most people in the, who answered the survey put in 50 for their, their figures, which is interesting because I, I looked at last year's survey and it looked like most people put in 100. So... Are people were people selling off their figures during the pandemic? Maybe that's uh, <laughs> that's what was going on. I don't know. Clearing out some space, huh? Yeah, wouldn't surprise yeah. me. And uh, then uh, the last uh, last of these freeform character uh, questions. Uh, uh, um, you know, this is doing with third party, and I think Daryl will will jump into the third party ones in a minute, but the, yeah, this one was which character would you like to see get redone by a third party company? Uh, this again had a lot of responses spread out. There's 190 responses. Uh, so not really a clear, uh, a clear winner on this one, but um, we had Nautica and Blaster. Oh, you, you got the, we got the word cloud here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it's a jumble because it was all free form. 
Yeah, but I don't I don't know what character is Beast War, but it's G one Beast War. <laughs> But uh, when I when I looked through the list manually, it looked like Nautica and Blaster mm -hmm. were the um, the two. They they got three they got three hits each, uh, and that was kind of the the most the most that any single character got. So we are getting a Nautica, I think, soon, right? That's already been teased. But a third party Blaster, I guess that's. But that, there's been lots of Blasters already. You know? But I guess if you want another one. <laughs> That's what they're looking for. So that's all the free form questions. So I guess, uh, Daryl, you can take us into the third party selections. Okay. Uh, and I don't know whether Jeremy has one for this, but we did have a question on whether you tend to open your figures or not or leave them sealed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was a quick little uh, answer. And uh, um, we have 89 or 85.9% of people said yes, they open their figures. Um, and uh, really, there was not. There was one uh, one person voted that they left them sealed, uh, and uh, that was me. Had... Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and thirteen point eight said that they uh, they a little from column A and a little from column B. So, yeah. Uh, all right, on to the third party category. Uh, this one we did break down because we did get a, a number of responses uh, uh, either last year or a year before that um, pocket scale figures shouldn't be included in with the regular masterpiece scaled stuff. So we did break it into two different categories. And yeah, what the hell? It, uh, it looks like it's uh, it, it went over well. Um, so in the main masterpiece scaled uh, category of third party stuff, um, we got... Uh, 273 responses and this one i uh this one wasn't a, much of a contest usually it's a bit more of a mix and a lot of more characters seem to get a lot of votes and everyone there's at least three or four that are pretty even uh not not in 2020 one character one figure just ran away with this uh and so with 59 percent of the vote uh oh one studio cell the third party unicron uh, won this category and I am not surprised as an owner of this figure. Uh, it is glorious. So yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with, with my copy and, uh, it apparently a lot of people are pretty happy with, uh, with this figure. Um, second place would have been, uh, with 28.2%. So a pretty big drop off was, uh, unique toys, uh, R-03 Dragoon. It's the Transformers The Last Night. Um, uh, it's their Megatron figure. And then third place would have been uh, Fans Toys number 44, Thomas, their Astro Train. On to the pocket scale figures. So there was a lot of pocket scale figures that came out in 2020. A bunch of, uh, a bunch from a, 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 a number of different manufacturers. We had Iron Factory, Iron Trans, which is a new company that I really didn't even know about. Um, Magic Square, New Age did a bunch again, and then we had uh, Transform Element uh, as well. Um, but the winner of this category with 35.1% of the vote uh, was Iron Factory's IF-EX42 Heat Death. It's the Transmetal 2 Megatron uh, from Iron Factory. And that was a pretty cool looking figure. Um, I don't have it, but it looks pretty damn awesome. Uh, second place in this category with 31% uh, was Magic Square's uh, uh, MS-B27 Voice Ripple. Um, I believe that is... Uh, is it Soundwave? I don't know. I can't see the actual full name of this one. Uh, sound something. <laughs> <laughs> you can't actually click on what the... Uh, yeah thing is so you can't see google the needs to really work on the results page of their phone. <laughs> it's not a big deal um and uh and third place with 29.8 percent was another iron factory figure their ex 45 uh uh yorio is shishu maro um and i can't see what that one is either um but yeah so that's cool um 
a lot of really cool figures in, in pocket scale. And I know that myself and, uh, and a number of others have definitely started shifting their collections to pocket scale because they're cheaper. Um, and then the last question in uh, the uh, for figures wise in third parties uh, category was uh, best third party exclusive in 2020. And fortunately, we didn't have a lot of conventions to go to, to to definitely give us a bunch of exclusives, but we did have a couple TF cons that gave us a bunch of exclusives. Um, and TF online definitely, uh, TF con online definitely had a bunch uh, for us to, to use or to, uh, to, 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 uh, to buy. And uh, the winner of this category came from TF online and it's the mastermind creations uh, Vexo Prominion with 48.4% of the vote. And it, yeah, it's just pretty, it's just awesome. The bat wing, come on. It's how can you argue with that figure? It's just awesome. Um, the rest of the, 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 the figures in this category weren't really close. Um, yeah. So it's just a cool figure. And, uh, if you've got one, you know, um, it's a repaint or a remold, whatever, but it's a, it's just pretty awesome. Um, let's go, Mike, did you, uh, have any uh, opinions on what uh, kind of transpired in the third party category here? Um, do you have any of the figures at one? Uh, or do you have any plans to get any of the figures at one? Yeah, nothing that one, of course. So the trend continues unabated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's no surprise with, uh, with Cell winning at all. I would have been shocked if it didn't win. But I think the only third-party figure I picked up this year was that uh, the Big Firebirds uh, Nicey. I voted for that one, and I think that was, what, like third to last place or something. So <laughs> I thought it got closer than that. But yeah, I think it was like fourth or fifth. It, it did what? quite well. Yeah, yeah. Huh? It was. I definitely saw that it was gaining a bunch of votes, and I, I really did think that it was going to come in second uh, to sell, mm -hmm. but uh, it did. It got moved down a few as the uh, as the rest of the people started, you know, voting. Yeah. So yeah, my uh, my trend continues. So <laughs> poor taste to all around. Uh, I didn't pick up any of the the pocket scale stuff, so mm, not really too much of a, a number twitch news there. And uh, and yeah, so no surprise on sale and and yeah, so cool. Right on. Uh, Charles, what are your thoughts? Uh, I know that you're definitely uh, a big fan of the pocket scale stuff. Um, and you do like Beast Wars. Uh, so, you know, Iron Factory's Heat Death uh, winning is uh, must have been, a uh, you know, a big a big boon for you because you like uh, Red Dragons and, and you know, and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I I get a I I get a commission for all the Iron Factory toys that get made. So... <laughs> I you know, it. since I knew it. <laughs> no, I mean that that was I mean I, I wish I got a chance to actually see this figure in person, but we did that when we talked about it on the show, that was a very cool figure, that the heat death figure. Um they also produced a blue variant for cryotech. Uh yeah, uh, I and yeah, those are that's a cool little figure. So uh, you know, if if I was at a convention, I might have picked that up, but that didn't happen last year. <laughs> um also, I wasn't surprised by the Studio Cell winning uh, there, and then the um, the Vexo Perminion winning the exclusive figure. Uh, everyone was going crazy for that Batwing, uh, Batman Transformer. Everyone, you know, all of, or I should say, Batman Transformer, Bat Spaceman Transformer. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a good it's a good figure, um, and we've uh, we've got one ready to give away as a prize at some point in the future. So you know. Uh, one of our lucky listeners is gonna is gonna be very happy to get that. Just a little tease. We we don't have the contest designed yet or anything. I'm just teasing it. <laughs> yeah, it's just in the prize closet. Yep. <laughs> Which is right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, go to the the prize closet. Um, J Jeremy, what about you? Uh, third party. I know you're huge into third party. So you yeah, know. so huge. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it, it's just uh, no real surprises here to me i mean i guess the pocket scale would be the toss-up where there's just so many figures but 
I think we've heard nothing but good things about um, about the uh, what was the name of it? The heat death. Um, so it doesn't really surprise me that much. Uh, and then the the Batman just was no contest uh, in my opinion. Uh, I know how ex- how excited we were when we saw it, and then when you actually got it in hand. Um, so yeah, it, it's I, I was fully expecting that to win. Right on. All right. Well, um, just to finish off the uh, the third party category, um, we had to vote for your favorite third party company, and this one was one of those other ones that just you list every single one and. You know, everyone votes for their favorite. And winning this category with 27.4% of the vote, Mastermind Creation slash Ocular Max. Uh, these guys have been consistently producing fantastic stuff over the years. And, uh, you know, it's no surprise that they are, are winners again in 2020. Um, second place was Iron Factory with 12.5%. And in third place with 10.5% Fans Toys. So, uh Congratulations to Mastermind Creations. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what they they bring out in 2021. Um, We have a couple more categories here, and I don't know whether you've got slides for those ones, Jeremy. Uh, But yeah, it looks like you do. Okay, cool. Um, They are, do you purchase toys, Transformer toys online? 94.5% of the people that voted do. Um, And that's, that's pretty cool. And then because it is 2020, <laughs> it's 2020. Yeah. it was a global <laughs> pandemic. Yeah. And then we said, which sites do you use? And we just let people pick the sites that they like to use. And with 76.9% surprising, nobody Amazon <laughs> wins this category. Um, but the second place one, uh, winner of this, uh, ca- of this uh, question with 66.5%, uh, was Big Bad Toy Store, so there is a you know a an actual toy toy store, not just a conglomerate. In and this. Toys R Us, there with ten point four percent. So those are all the Canadians. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, on. Th- this list was so long. I like in the image. I I cropped out a lot, but I like took out any of the the zero percent votes, and still yeah. I didn't get. Hardly anyone in there. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a lot. Um, There was a lot of people who you could, you could also write in an answer here. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people who, who wrote in show Z store and they wrote it in, in a bunch of different ways. So show Z store probably could have got a bunch more votes. Um, I thought it was on the list, Um, but uh, maybe it's not. Um, you also so, had a store that hadn't been in business for five years. Yes, I did. So, I mean, it's hard for me to keep track of those as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, so anyway, that, you know, it's, we'll, we'll rejigger the list and go back at it next year. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's the end of the toy survey. Um, go around real la- uh, quickly last, uh, time for everybody. Any surprises on the list? Anything that, uh, somebody's uh, not really you know kind of either upset that the, that this figure lost or anything like that or is everybody just kind of yeah that's you know deserving the people have spoken and the the crowdsourced information is true mike think- i'd probably go to you first save it jeremy <laughs> slow down <laughs> mike mike seems to have picked everything wrong so let's see what mike has to say think my success rate this year was five percent there was one there was one that i picked the winner on this one i even forget what it was i, I think it was uh 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 no it was a uh, uh, shit it was sell it was sell because i had picked uh, uh i had picked sell on one of them because i knew that was gonna because the, <laughs> the third party one it was like you could pick multiples right yeah yeah, so Cell was definitely in there along with Big Firebird, but I was under no delusions that Cell was going to win. So you know what? I hedge my bets. There you I go. picked that okay. one too. <laughs> Everything else, 100% wrong. <laughs> 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 but I think the thing that hurts the most, mm, it's to their fang. It's to their fang. <laughs> right from the start. 
it, to lose from a re, to a repack. I Ugh. know. Not even not even a repaint. Not even a remold. No, just take all those excess copies we got. Toss them in there. <laughs> uh, beats up my boy. So sad. All right, Jeremy, let me know. Uh, I mean, I think the, the biggest surprise to me was, uh, like you said earlier, the Skylinks lost over Earthrise Prime. I mean, you know, as much as I go on about the Earthrise Prime, Skylinks is a fun toy. And either that or yep. Scorponok, you would expect one of those two to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, boy, Skylinks. <laughs> Charles, anything? Uh, nah, I don't think I have anything to add. I, I'll just echo what Jeremy said about Sky, you know, Skylinks and Scorponok versus uh, Earthrise Optimus Prime. I think that's the only really, I mean, and, and not even really that shocking. I mean, it is Optimus Prime. So if you do a, if you do Optimus Prime, if you do a well designed Optimus Prime with a nice transformation, that usually will will get all the boys to the yard. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is the unexpected part of the year <laughs> <laughs> oh cool uh, that's all the uh that's all the toys uh that uh, were voted on um do we have anything else for this show i think we do charles i'm gonna throw it back to you all right yeah so uh i mean it, we are doing a regular transmission show, so we'll we'll do a little trips to the store. We'll do a quick trips to the store. This is where we show off all the cool transformer stuff we got this week. We do this as a video, and we're doing the whole show as video. So this is part we're doing a, a video as to show off our transformers purchase uh, the merchandise we got in beautiful high definition. Well, of course, we'll have the audio right there, so we'll describe all our figures in loving detail. But without further ado, trips to the store. The Transmissions Podcast will return after these messages. <laughs> all right, I'm not going to do all the intro stuff yeah. since we're just doing the video. Well, so You're not expecting Daryl to edit this part out and put it out by itself. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Are you not just going to clip it uh, and then just put it up again? Because do I get do I get the week off? You do get the week off, Daryl. Congratulations. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we all we've all got toys. I guess I'll I'll just go first. <laughs> um, I made it out to Walmart and uh, found a couple of things that I had been looking for. Uh, I'm going to show one this week, and I'm going to save one for next week. Uh, but I got a Netflix War for Cybertron Elita One. Ooh. There she is, Elita One. The box is empty. Where is she? She's I'm right here. You, <laughs> you opened your toy? There she is, Elita One. Uh, this is a remold of RC, and as we just learned in the uh, survey, RC is not a great figure. So <laughs> she's gonna stay. She's gonna stay in robot mode. The uh, worst. It is the, yeah. the worst. I mean, look look at the, look at that backpack. Look, look look at that junk in the trunk. <laughs> look at that trunk. That's junk. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean. Alita One was was a great character from the Netflix show, which is why I picked her up. I, I really liked her character and the and the robot mode. I mean, it it does look like Alita One. It's just the transformation is terrible. So, and she didn't transform in Earth in, in the show anyway. So, we're just gonna keep her in robot mode. And uh, and actually, uh, one thing I'm also disappointed is the gun. The gun is not that great. They should have given her a better gun. See through. Um, Mm. Yeah. But uh yeah, so this is Earth Earthrise or not Earthrise, it's just Netflix uh War for Cybertron Elita One. Uh she does come with uh part of Teletran One. I'm not gonna get all the Netflix figures, so I guess I'm just gonna be happy with this one part of Teletran One <laughs> as a you know, as a uh a diorama display piece, piece of you know, flimsy paper there. 
Um, I've, I haven't looked at that on eBay or something to someone who didn't want to pick up the figure. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping just someone scans them all. Yeah. <laughs> just do a high res scan of it first. Yeah. <laughs> then sell it. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, uh, that's what I got. Um, why don't I throw it to Jeremy? All right. Uh, all I have is a comic. I made it to the comic store for the first time in a few weeks, and I only had two comics on my pull list, and one of them was Transformers. So I have uh, Escape number two, and this is the Beth McGuire Smith cover. And, um, I think it was the one I picked. When you we were that started. thirsty, Daryl, huh? That thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sorry, Jeremy. I, I just ignore Daryl. Um, I, mean, I, I can I can remove him completely from the call. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he man, I have the power. <laughs> no. But anyway, th this is a good book, and I think this is the cover I picked. I can't remember, but I think it was. But yeah, anyway, that's all I got this week. Cool. All right. Uh Mike, let's go with you. Sure. So I got one figure, and it's got a little bit of a, a story behind it. So I picked up uh, Battlecore Optimus Prime from uh, Combiner Wars off of eBay a few weeks ago. And I picked this up not because I love the Combiner Wars, like the, the, the Prime and uh, uh, Motormaster figures, because they're not the greatest figures in the world. But you know what? I and uh, like my next project for this stuff is going to be putting together a uh, like a custom combiner that is like all random different parts, but it has it is is kind of like well designed so that the color scheme all is all matches and goes together, and the form all looks good and everything. So I think I'm going to pick up a couple more uh, limbs for this guy, and probably one of the the the, um, the the extra part kits for my, uh, for him as well. So maybe like, I'm, I'm thinking one of like the uh, the SND kits that turns him into like Ultra Magnus or something like that, or maybe the other uh, Nova Prime kit that gives him that kind of like that black skirt thing. So yeah, that's uh that's my figure on this one, Battlecore Optimus Prime. It's still a Hard ass figure to find, though. <laughs> Didn't Daryl have a bunch of them? I had two. I hate that figure. <laughs> <laughs> why why do you have? Why do you have two? I had <laughs> two. I have one, oh. one now, and I turned it into into Nova Prime. So, what a uh, kit did you get for it? Uh, the one that everyone wants, the expensive one. Um, I can't remember what it is, but it's the one that has the big yellow sh sh sheath sheath on it. So, I don't know what, yeah, that thing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, anyway, it, it looks pretty badass after you get it done. The one that you have that, to pop the pin out. That's one of the ones I'm thinking of uh, of getting. Yeah, it's hard to find. So it's, uh, but uh, yeah, good luck. Uh, it's it's not a fun kit to install, but if you get it once you get it installed, it's fucking awesome. Nice. Do you know if you can do the that kit along with the Ultra Magnus one? Because I really like the chest piece for the Ultra Magnus kit, but I love the the kind of skirt part for Nova Prime. I don't know of the Ultra Magnus kit, so, oh. um, and I don't. I think you can still do a combination gimmick with the uh, Nova Prime stuff on there, um, but uh, I've never done it. I just think it looks really badass as Nova Prime. Hmm. Cool. That's my piece. All right, uh, Daryl, wrap it up for us. Uh, well, I didn't have anything until I was at my comic book store and they were putting out stuff that they had just gotten in that day. And uh, they had this and I was like, oh, I'm going to use up all my available credit to get this thing because I haven't bought a Masterpiece figure in a while. So I got Masterpiece RC. Hmm. <laughs> Not bad. The uh, the the backpack folding up. I think I've done it wrong, but uh, <laughs> I, I whatever. Uh, I, I 
just wanted it to kind of be transformed into robot mode when we were doing the show. So it comes in car mode. I transformed it to robot mode and I'll probably have to mess around with it a bit. These backpacks that are, you know, everything like the whole car is here, Charles, like that's all of it. <laughs> so it's, there's a lot of folding in there. So like I said, I'm pretty sure I've done something wrong, but uh, it's in there. It stands. It looks like RC. So um, there's a bunch of different accessories, like tons of accessories. Um, here's the box. Uh, it's got like, there's all the accessories still stuck in the box there. So three different faces, a whole whack of guns, a bunch of uh, like uh, uh, effect parts, even the little, uh, this is the little like stabby thing that comes out of her wheel in the movie. So <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a cool figure. Um, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll figure out how to do the robot mode properly. And then I'll just, you know, stash it in the cupboard back there and forget about it. But yeah, it's neat. Um, the, as I hold it, the chest really doesn't bother me that much, but you can see it there. Like it's a fucking shelf, you know, <laughs> like it's not really done properly, but whatever get used yeah. to the folding charles you're gonna be doing a lot of that once unicron comes in <laughs> or you just take it all off and have two yeah. things <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's yeah, it I'm... that's all i got this week oh no i can say this this is this too too um i messaged i was saying on twitter that i had I opened up uh, an old bag of uh beast wars stuff this particular bag this is my Magna boss. Oh, and, nice. Um, he, when I opened him up, I had put him away. I had packed him away combined. Um, and subsequently my gold plastic silver bolt did not survive. Oh, <laughs> oh. so, uh, so I went and got another silver bolt this week. Ooh, careful with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, don't be careful with it. It's your I live money. On the you edge. Waste <laughs> I live on the edge, Charles. I live on the edge. Uh, it's a cool toy. I mean, this is it's not a great figure. It's it's gold plastic, yes, but it's yeah. I mean, the whole point is to be able to put silver bolt in Mega Magna Boss and, and form that, that Beast Wars combiner, but other than that, it's it's really not uh, not a great figure. But yeah, I did I did get that this week as well. That's it. That's all. <laughs> all right, uh, and that will do it for this episode's trips to the store. And we will go back to transmissions. <laughs> Just wrap the show. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just say goodbye. <laughs> uh, th that'll do it for Trips to the Store. And that will do it for this episode of Transmissions. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed our Best of 2020 survey results. Uh, you know, we we really enjoy doing this every year. Uh, we know it was a little bit late this year, but hope uh, everyone still enjoyed it. And... <laughs> and uh we'll look forward to next year uh hopefully 2021 will be better uh you know have a have a better uh uh happening than 2020 you know it won't be the dumpster fire that 2020 was so uh as always we end the show by shouting out our masterpiece donatrion so thank you so much to John 4x11 good and Dinobot Maximize. You guys are awesome and thank you for continuing to support the show. It keeps us going. And uh, before we uh, we do want to mention our T Public store, that's at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. And this week everything at T Public is on sale from February 23rd to the 27th. So until this Saturday, everything is 35% off, and that also means $13 t-shirts. So if you go to transmissionspodcast.com slash shop and click that link, use that link to buy anything from TeePublic, that will help out the show. And you've got a pretty hefty discount this week, so check it out.
All right, everyone. Uh, that's it for this episode of Transmissions. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Bye all. Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week.